So this is Roxy, a 12 plus or minus year old uh, mixed breed Westie who was presented for multiple cutaneous papillomas. Uh, as you can see, they're quite extensive and surgical removal would be both quite involved as well as create quite an expense. Uh, the owner has elected to um, cryo all of these papillomatous masses uh, in an attempt to forego an extensive anesthetic procedure. We're going to uh, one by one uh, freeze these with approximately a 30 second a freeze cycle, thaw cycle, and a freeze cycle again for 30 seconds. Remember we want to make sure that we're knocking any uh, material off of the surface so that we get good contact and quick freezing. We don't want any ice crystals building up, preventing contact. So we're gonna freeze this for 30 seconds. Again, I'm knocking these crystals off as I freeze. We're gonna do a 30 second freeze cycle, followed by a thaw cycle and a refreeze. Heather, how are we doing? Five more seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, so we have put a little lidocaine subcutaneously on all these masses. Uh, this dog is a little bit fractious, as well as the number of lesions present uh, instigated the desire to block these lesions. Uh, some of these are more tissue dense and so we are extending the free cycle for 45 seconds. There are additionally some papilluminous masses on the distal limbs where surgical removal would be very difficult due to the lack of sufficient uh, tissue for closure. This particular distal limb papillomatous mass uh, is both interdigitally as well as right at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. And these tend to elicit a lot of attention postoperatively from Westy type breeds. So this is what the lesion looks like post thaw. We're going to go ahead and refreeze these for 30 seconds. I find that the fleshy masses uh, do require a double freeze cycle to completely to cause complete regression. Typically I recheck these in three weeks and if at three weeks there's any remaining tissue done. If there's any remaining tissue at that point in time I will touch it up at no charge to the client. Overall response is probably 85 to 90 percent and client satisfaction is very high. There is minimal to no post cryo complications. Occasionally we'll find a dog will lick at these lesions. Occasionally these dogs will lick at the lesions and so we'll use a body stocking or an Elizabethan collar to prevent self-trauma during the necrosis and healing phase. Again, client satisfaction is very good. Patient acceptance is excellent. And post-cryo scarring is minimal at best.
You'll notice that we're wearing masks. Uh, this is not done for the prior procedure purposes. This is done as we are still suffering under the COVID limitations. In contrast, uh, we're going to utilize a, let's call it a less exacting procedure, uh, which is to utilize the cone to isolate the lesion and then apply cryo to it. This is a much less exacting procedure. I don't know if you noticed, but it is splashing out of the cone and I just got hit in the eye with a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, the cryo solution. Uh, what I find with these, this particular procedure is as it is less exacting, uh, you'll sometimes find uh, necrosis uh, to the periphery around the lesion. Additionally, you'll sometimes notice that the uh, isolator will get stuck and tear some of these lesions. Uh, lastly, uh, what we'll sometimes find is that you don't get complete freezing at the base of the lesion as you can't physically direct the solution to the area that is, uh, that is indicated. Uh, if it is not a surface that is flat or smooth, as in interdigital regions, you get significant leakage of the uh, cryo solution.